Okay, let's do this. So we're going to be checking out the version 3.5 special program. Thank you guys for coming to the stream. Let's check it out. I'm turning the captions on, of course. Let's start. Oh, it's you, Traveler. If I'm not mistaken, you must be in Mondstadt now to celebrate the Windbloom Festival. The fragrance of flowers Windbloom has Festival. filled the air. Oh, me? I'm conducting some research. If you'd like to know what's in store for this year's Windbloom Festival, well, then you should watch the Genshin Impact version 3.5 trailer. <laughs> Enjoy. Albedo is so cute. I love his voice. <laughs> oh, dear creature. Why do you bow down? For fear of the unknown? Hold on. This trailer is kind of oh, spicy. Look at that. Never seen anything like this in all my life. It's, a, it's cinematic. What world does this place conceal? You have a troubled look on your face. What happened? I can't take it. I think that he might have seen you. Oh wait! Fate He's back. Did you the right to enter this place? Dane is back. Should never live to remember their fall. Oh! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah! Oh, the music! Oh, it's hitting! Look at that! This is why I want this game! This is why I play it, baby! This is why! Oh my gosh. Oh, there's Mika. Bro, she looks dope. He's cute. Oh, wait a second. He has a crossbow? Oh, that's so cool. That is different. I even like the crosshair for it. Oh my god, yes! That is cool. Oh, I like how he shoots it off in his combo, too. That's dope. It's three weapons in one. That's that is unnecessary. Kale, right? Kale! Such a great view. I mean, it's understandable. It must have been a long time since you last. I know this is pre-recorded, but rest in peace. <laughs> rest in peace. This is the truth. Great Vayu Viastra. This is the last time you're gonna hear his voice. <laughs> Think you've ruined Sumeru's reputation in Mondstadt beyond all hope of repair. Yikes. That was awesome though. That was super hype. Oh, I gotta use these codes. Hold on, let me uh, take a picture of this. There we go. Yeah, this will be the last time you hear his voice in uh, in the game. I started the game right after the first Windbloom event. Nice. Yeah, what a shame. You know what I mean? Like he's so talented. You know, some some people let the the fame and the clout get to them. He's one of those people. So fortunate. I don't know if the codes still work. Do they not? Oh, it's a 11 p.m. UTC. Maybe not. Oops. It was good, travelers. Welcome to the Genshin Impact version 3.5 special program. I'm Koi Dao, the voice of Albedo, chief alchemist of the Knights of Avonius. And today, as you all can see, I am joined by... Hey, wait, that's that's my intro. That's what yep. I usually say. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, everyone, I'm Zach Aguilar, the voice of the male traveler. Zach! What's up, everybody? I'm Amber May, and I voice Dia. And I haven't heard her Albedo's yet. Albedo's long and official sounding title. I'm going to introduce her as <clears throat> Sumeru's legendary Aramite mercenary, the Flame Maid. The Flame Maid! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that title. I do too. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it just so happens that today is Amber's first time joining us on the special program. Yes, and I am super excited to be here. And this is a little cheapy Dia, she's so cute. Ah, I can't wait to go over everything. <laughs> she is adorable. I'm so psyched. <laughs> totally, and I know all You know, the I like how her hair reminds me of the uh, the protagonist, the new protag in uh, Perso or not Persona, Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Engage. There are also super excited, so why don't we kick things off by starting with our first new playable character for version 3.5. Dia! Woo! Starting with Dia! Let's go! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's taken a while, but she is finally here. Let's That's go! Right. And even though she's technically a new playable character, Amber we've May. seen Dia in the game for a while now, and she's even become a good friend of ours. She was pretty active throughout the Sumeru storyline and helped us get through some pretty tough moments. So next, we'll let Amber do the honors and introduce this character. Bro, I'll be able to play with her when I get to Sumer Sumeru. <laughs> As you mentioned, a lot of players might already feel familiar with Dia's character. Even though she might appear carefree and casual, she actually possesses amazing skills and is really professional. She's already made a name for herself as one of the strongest members among the Aramites. And even in the midst of danger, she has an uncanny ability to make others around her feel safe. Aww. Yeah, right? It well, that's nice. Like no matter what kind of situation we're in, as soon as Dia appears, everybody can relax knowing that we're in good hands. Is that <laughs> what Dunya Zod feels like having her around? I mean, I wouldn't mind hanging out with Dia all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now that Dia will be available... He said, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Travelers will have a I wouldn't mind having her, her around, too. That's right. So let's watch some clips of Dia. You might find that she's a little bit different from your initial impressions. We mercs have one. Let's get it. Year. This but is why we're here. Your new boss. Her outfit is amazing. Let's get it on. Hi. Okay, I like her combos. That's her burst? Let's go! That burst is epic. Was was that did did, did she have a flip phone? Wait, did what is phones in Sumeru? What is that? <laughs> no. Is she doing her makeup? It's actually her makeup box. Yeah, yeah. She uses he said a flip phone. Makeup fresh, you know. Even when she's out on the job. In fact, she's always looking for a chance to go shopping for accessories with Candace. Interesting. So she's got a more, like, I want to say, refined side to her, too. I feel like that's she's not always really got a slay thing among, like, merc types, you know? Yeah, the mercenary lifestyle can be pretty rough, but she's not always on the job. Look at her eyeliner. <laughs> that's another side of her character show when she's off the clock, you know? Hmm, okay. I see, I see. Uh, but I'm sure what everyone wants to know now is what her abilities are like in a fight. Yeah, right. none of the other yeah. characters you, put on makeup like that, stuff? do they? <laughs> Dia wields a claymore in combat and carries a pyrovision. She uses fiery attacks to leave enemies smoldering in her wake. She's Ooh, gonna be a smoke. fun claymore user to use. Fiery, yeah, just like her. <laughs> totally. In battle, Dia uses her elemental skill to create a fiery sanctum field. When an opponent within the field takes damage, it'll unleash a coordinated attack. Oh, that's nice. AOE pyro damage to them. Nice. So, looks like this ability will be really good for swapping characters and creating elemental reactions. Yeah, for sure. Also, active characters within this field have their resistance to interruption increased. And when such characters take damage, a portion of that damage will be mitigated and taken by Dia instead. She's so brave. Y oh, know, wow. I'm kind of worried that Dia could easily find herself in a tough spot. Ah, don't worry too much. There's a limit to the amount of damage. Yeah, I love how she just punches team. people. That's but great. When her own HP is low, she can also rely on her own passive talent. Uh, I want Nahida. Awesome. Rerun so her for me. And Please. she has boundaries, which is healthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is kind of a legendary mercenary. I think that comes with the job. All right, let's move on to her burst. Yeah, let's when check Dina it out. unleashes her elemental burst, she casts her claymore aside and enters the blaze. Look at that. Lines. She just boxes them up. Rawr. Epic. <laughs> While in this state, Dia will use her fists to unleash quick attacks Look at on that. her opponents, dealing considerable Ooh. pyro damage. When the skill's duration ends, she will finish it with a stylish flying kick. Ha! 
<laughs> nice. Yeah, nice, right? <laughs> and last but not least, she has an exploration talent. During the day, which is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the movement speed of party members is increased. Oh, really? Yeah, that makes sense, <laughs> lore-wise, you know, since she's one of the strongest There's a time period. from the desert. I guess keeping the pace up even under the scorching sun is just another day on the job for her. That's oh, nice to have. I was waiting for somebody to increase movement strong speed. and bold character, but her closer friends know that after she's had a few story quest hours, soon, she'll start to get into some more emotional topics. In her story quest, Manticora chapter, the traveler and Dio work to solve some trouble Dia's mercenary group is facing. In the process, we'll learn Rosario more has about the same Dia's talent, but at story. night instead. It oh, I should put her on my team. That have been buried in the past. Oh, another familiar face, Dunyar Zod, will also be making an appearance in the quest. So, be sure to look forward to that. Oh, heck yeah. So when will Dia be available in the game? Good question. Okay, so, event wishes for version 3.5. Whoa, 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 whoa. With Sino? It's going to be Sino and, and Dia? Let's go! In I got a chance to get Sino! Version, both Dia and Sino will be available with their own event wishes. Oh, this is a great. Reminder to our travelers out there, Dia will not be an event exclusive character. What? After the version 3.6 update. Is she going to be on the standard banner? The one after this upcoming 3.5 update, she will become available in the standard wish. Oh and my god! Weapons, the, the best Claymore, standard banner character! See? Ooh. Hands down! Version 3.5 weapon event wish. That's awesome. Ooh, I know. Oh, oh, and um, Faruzan's very own hangout quest okay. will also be added in version 3.5. So I haven't done any of the hangout events yet. Interested in getting to know more about one of Sumeru's oldest researchers. So that means I can roll for Sino and not have to get Dia right away, right? Because she's just going to be on the standard banner anyway. So, but then I'd have to, you know, get lucky on the standard banner, which probably won't happen. So maybe I should just you get her. Definitely won't want to miss this. In the hangout, travelers will not only be able to see more about the differences between the academia's various schools of thought. But you'll also get to know more about Faruzan's personality and background. She is such an interesting character, so I'm sure her hangout will be equally entertaining. Be sure to check it out. Oh, I will. Should be good. In version 3.5, travelers can also expect an all-new Archon quest titled Kari Bear. With Dane. We continue our story as we search for our sibling. In this quest, travelers will not only meet Kaya and Sumeru, but will also be joined Yeah, I was about to say, didn't they just have mysterious friend, a Sino banner? Ooh. Recently? Yes. Oh, uh, if I remember correctly. That reruns pretty soon. Kaya is also a descendant of Conria. I'm just curious what will happen if, you know, those two meet or something. Ooh, you're oh, right. good point. That'll be interesting. Also, uh, what was it? K Kari Bear? K Kari Bear? Isn't that like sounds like the name of a sandwich? <clears throat> you know, actually, a uh, Kari Bear happens to be the name of a very important role in this storyline, uh, okay. and a lot of events in the story will be unfolding around this character. As travelers progress, who brought the story, Albedo here? <laughs> we'll learn more about Conria and the Abyss. We'll uncover more about what happened in the past, and even learn some secrets behind the founding of the Abyss Order. Also, travelers will find themselves facing a powerful new Abyss Herald as well as a new Black Serpent Knight. So be that careful. That thing looks scary. Boy. They both look scary. <laughs> thing got to sound so scary. Yeah. Why can't he be the Black Serpent friend? Right. <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like every time Conria crops up in the story, we learn a little bit more about the world of Tevat. Huh. So what else can you tell us, Zach? You know, I can't say much more about the story. You're just gonna have to play through it yourself, Koi. Well, maybe just you can play through just, it. Just, maybe you can just, you know, whisper. I love their banter. Like oh. a little, my little chibi ear right here. <laughs> you know, I could, but I'm not gonna. <sighs> okay, fine. Looks like we have a lot of story content to look forward to in the new version. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't we forgetting something or someone? Mika. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, nope. You know, I, I didn't forget. Uh, we have a second playable character landing in version 3.5, and he's actually from Mondstadt. Let's go. Yes, Mondstadt. Okay, and he ready? looks awesome. Because we finally made it to Mika. Woohoo. 
Luke. I'm not sure if everyone remembers this young member yes! rising through the ranks of the Knights of Avonius, but we have seen him before. Yeah, I remember he was the one who read the Grandmaster's letter during Vine Lacefest. Aww, he kind of looks like a little prince. Kind of cute. He does. Yeah, he does have that kind of vibe. I love his little ahoge. I think it's we can cute. Koi introduce this one. Chocobo guy? <laughs> he does look like a chocobo! <laughs> Mika is currently the knight's most active cartographer and plays an important role in Eula's reconnaissance company. Even though he lacks social skills like Zack and doesn't appear to be particularly strong, <laughs> wow. Mika is meticulous. The Zack slander. And maintains a good working relationship with his colleagues. He's also capable of fully understanding his leader's commands, which is pretty useful. Yeah. And his leader is Eula, right? That is correct. Uh, the interesting thing is that he's able to understand Eula despite her awkward way of speaking and will even assist her with communicating with other units. Whoa, respect. That's pretty cool. Indeed. Over time, Mika has gradually become a very reliable member who could handle a variety of tasks. I read on Twitter that reruns are usually like this for new characters, like when A was released 2.1, then had a rerun during 2.5, so who knows? You might get into Hita rerun soon. Let's watch the trailer. I'll be there. I'll be there. Verifying our current position, measuring distance to target area, all right, I've recorded the terrain conditions. Oh, he's so nerdy. <laughs> I like it though. His combo is really cool. I like that. Providing cover fire. He's all about that ice, that ice life. Leave the wounded to me. Hey, he might be a solid four-star character to have. Who gave this child a crossbow? Right. <laughs> That's. That's what I want to know. I mean, I mean, I guess since he was deployed as part of Grandmaster Varker's expeditionary force, it, it was him. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, his exceptional performance helped him gain the Grandmaster's trust, and he even taught him a couple of things. This training no doubt helped Mika develop a certain level of combat prowess, even if he himself... Yeah, was that's crazy. For example... Because not only does he... He's like a catalyst, and then he has this pole arm here too, and then he has a gun. Like, what the heck? Even though Three weapons. Swords tend to be the weapon of choice among the Knights of Avonius, Mika uses a spear and a crossbow, which is a result of his combat instruction with Grandmaster Varka. His mentorship and focus on flexibility helped Mika find a combat style that is more suited to a little guy like himself. Huh. Man's overqualified. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Grandmaster seems to think outside <laughs> of the box, and having a mentor like him will definitely be a big asset for Mika as he continues to grow. For sure, for sure. All right, let's check out Mika putting his variety. He looks like a canary <laughs> in combat. As a support role for the Knights of Avonius, Mika has learned a variety of methods for assisting his teammates in combat. When he uses his elemental skill, he'll attack the enemy with his crossbow, increasing his teammate's attack speed and physical Ooh, damage. Ooh, okay. And when he uses his elemental burst, Mika recovers HP for his teammates and gives them a special... That's status. what I like to see. Healing too. Mika Healing does. and speed? Well, tell us. This status causes teammates to regenerate HP whenever their attacks hit an enemy. Ooh, Ooh, that's oh, so that's nice. really good. So yeah, no, Mika spends a lot of time working in the wild, and he's developed the necessary survival and adventure skills. When Mika is on the team, the location of nearby resources unique to Mondstadt will display on the mini-map. Unique to Mondstadt, okay. The team's ability to find necessary resources while adventuring. Tweety Bird hair. <laughs> yeah, I can see he has a lot of support skills. Yeah, it's always good to have a reliable member on the team. So, let's talk about the event wishes for the later part. Wait a f Second, wait a f second. Sh Shit, huh? And Ayaka? Oh my god, I'm gonna be able to get them too? Oh, sh that's crazy. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Travelers can expect to see. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Returning with rerun event wishes alongside Mika. So if you'd like to add Mika to your team, I'm broke, dude. Mika I am really broke. This. Great. <laughs> My money is We've gone. We've covered a lot of content, so let's take a quick break here before we dive into some other version 3.5 reveals. Sounds good. It's time for another redemption code. Everyone ready? What and the actual code incoming? Redemption code. They know exactly what they're doing here. They know exactly what they're doing here. I don't like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't like it. I've been waiting for so far. Yes, a lot of people have been waiting for her for a while. Like, since I've been streaming the game and we did that story quest for her, people have been like, man, I've been wanting to get her. When are we going to have a rerun for her? So I'm really glad that uh, we are getting a rerun finally. Her first rerun. No Eula, though? How come no Eula? Was, was, did people think it was going to be Eula? I still remember the eternal Ayaka. There's my wife where I guess she's all of our wives. Yeah, of course. I finally caught up to a stream. What's going on, Jose? The support for Eula release is not with Eula. Uh, people were speculating that it was going to be Eula. Welcome back. Wait, everyone. wait, 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 wait. So does that mean leaks were wrong this time? Finally. The events That's good. Our way in version 3.5. As you can see, the main event will be the wind bloom it would be funny if mihoyo is catching up to you guys like the people who keep leaking and they're just like last minute changing to throw those people off the leakers off because i mean i guess they could do that ah there's nothing like the soft monstat breeze on your face so true so true i'm sure many of you are already familiar with the festival with time it has become an important celebration of freedom and love for the people of monstat during the festival, people give fresh flowers to the ones they love and follow the important tradition of offering their wind bloom to the animal archon. Colin, nice. who's now been cured of Elazar, will once again make her way to this. They're the king of last minute changes, right? Romantic and colorful. That sword festival. looks really cool. Aw, I wanna go. Cool. Excited to see her. Ah, well, it gets spicier because accompanying her for the trip is Tainari and Sino. Ooh. Yikes. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. It feels unusual to see them all come to Mondstadt. Right? It's like all It's really sad here. because Tainari went from being my if you've seen my reactions to the the character demos and such, Tainari went from being my favorite character to my least favorite character like overnight. <laughs> Take a field trip. Kale will be playing an important role in this storyline and upon arriving in Mondstadt, she finds a mysterious prophecy in a book. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull up the game after the stream. Pieces of the prophecy in order to light the lantern of utmost joy and receive a supreme blessing. Okay, Ooh. so I'm assuming this supreme blessing would do something like granting your wish, right? That's right. In the course of helping Kale find leads about the prophecy, travelers will get to know more about Kale's background and see how she's grown to be the person we know and love. Of course, we'll also be meeting lots of... Uh, <clears throat> familiar faces throughout the event so i'm sure there'll be plenty of smiles as we reunite with some old friends right on oh sweet sounds like we'll be making some great memories in this one. Oh, by the way yeah i'm just gonna wait for the new voice actor i'm not saying tainari's bad but and there's a girl I just don't want to play as him nice catch how did you notice him he's got such npc vibes just kidding uh yes timaeus will be playing an important role in this event other than standing too close to the crafting table uh, but as for who the girl standing next to him is we'll have to play through the story and see okay Ooh. okay okay i'm, I'm excited in an event like Wind i'll be there soon looks like it'll be a romantic story am i right like i said we'll see <laughs> Oh, in addition to the festival storyline, the Adventurers Guild will also be... You think it'll be Bryce Pappenbrook that is going to take Tainari's place? That'd be interesting. I like Bryce. There'll be three available Bryce would do pretty well. Pursuit, Ballads of Breeze, and Breezy Snapshots. Yes! Awesome! Ooh! <laughs> Ooh is correct. In Floral Pursuit, travelers will need to continuously collect bloom balloons to increase their score. After collecting a set amount of balloons, the next area that actually looks kind of fun. But it looks like the like a similar mini game to the one that they had in Lantern Right. A ring of pursuit will appear. But that one was funner. Touch the ring to leave the area and because you got the fly challenge. And in each area, travelers will also encounter Airsots balloons that pursue you. If you're caught by an Airsots balloon, you will lose one pursuit point and be returned to the start point of that area. Ooh, mm. scary. So we'll probably need to uh, avoid those. This is a horror game and now. Travelers will be able to enjoy floral pursuit in single player mode or tackle challenges along with their friends in co-op mode. Wow, looks like that'll be fun. What's next? 
Well, let me ask you. Yeah, this actually you looks like really fun. Games? <gasps> yes. I I thought I thought you would. Is that multiplayer it's too? It's a rhythm game. <gasps> it's called. I love rhythm Ballads games. Of breeze. This time, travelers will be able to choose from three different instruments and use their instruments of choice to play through the song challenges. Nice. And will that actually affect the sound they hear in the game mode? Yep. Oh, that actually it's looks really, really fun. Old and play will be different. Ah, Looks like those cool. mobile rhythm games. Mm -hmm. While performing a song, different notes will appear on the screen. When a note falls on the decision line, press the decision line to score points. The amount of points scored will vary depending on your timing, and a rank will be awarded according to the amount of points scored, and you'll be able to claim the corresponding rewards. Sweet! Oh, and uh, as with previous iterations of the game, there will right. be a function to calibrate the input delay of your device. I think the thing about Tainari, I know we keep talking about him, but like, because I don't really want to talk about him anymore, to be honest. But the thing about it is, is I'm not going to let that one character ruin my whole experience. You know what I mean? Like, I want to support the English VA cast. They're all amazing people. I love each and every one of them. Um, all the ones that I follow, especially on Twitter. So, like, I'm not going to let one person ruin the whole entire experience. English version of the game for me because it's not called Elliot Gindy Impact. It's Genshin Impact. You know what I mean? So <laughs> screw him. In line, which I'm I'm gonna keep playing in English experience. and I'll patiently wait for them to uh, oh, replace him. Travelers who are interested in getting oh, that's good that you can change the, the game, calibration. An editing mode will be available again for players to create their own beat maps, yes. which can then be shared for other travelers to challenge. I can't wait. Sounds like fun. Yeah, sounds like a lot of rematches. <laughs> You're on. And finally, we have Breezy Snapshots, Ooh. which will have travelers once again making use of their trusty camera. Travelers will be given photography targets and will need to travel to the corresponding locations to snap some photos and receive rewards. Click, click. Just that looks kind of fun. <laughs> Beautiful. A photo event. During the Windbloom Festival event, travelers will have the chance to obtain an exclusive four-star Claymore weapon called Mailed Flower. Oh, nice. I like it. Really fits the theme. Right? Yeah, pretty flowers. I love them. I really hope travelers will enjoy all the different games that the event has to offer and join the people of Mondstadt for the festive atmosphere. Definitely. I can already feel the wind bloom's breath. Anyway, next we oh, have this is for the teapot? event also taking place in Mondstadt called Spices from the West Northerly Search. That's right. Oh wait, so if what? You remember that there was a Sumeru scholar we helped once when we were in Liyue. Apparently, her research gained the attention of Lord Sangama Bay. You know, Dory. And now she's received additional funding. This time, the scholar <laughs> has come to Mondstadt to find people to assist her research and taste test some special dishes with seasoning. Oh, if she's got Dory's backing, then she should have all the Mora she'll ever need. <laughs> oh, that sounds really nice. Uh, so what can we expect this time around? Dory's right, supplying, so bro. For this event will be pretty similar to last time. After we start creating the seasoning, we'll need to add the ingredients to the pot in the right order by hitting the button as the needle points to the corresponding ingredient. That's going to destroy my whole brain. However, that looks we confusing. Have a limited amount of attempts, so we need to add all the required ingredients with as few mistakes as possible. Oh, I guess it's not. Never mind. More seasoning recipes will gradually unlock throughout the event period. I'm sure this won't be too hard for travelers that are familiar with cooking their own dishes. Oh, yeah, I always cook. I cook all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. sure. I know what you are. Dude, I'm so bad at cooking in this game, man. I always forget. <laughs> their completed seasoning. I always forget. I never have food. Fragrant dishes. We can also invite. It's just like real life. Taste test the fragrant. Nothing's different. In a teapot to increase their companionship experience. After they taste a dish, we can hear their responses, which will vary based on the character's personal preferences. This will test how well travelers understand each character's personal taste. Oh no, that's gonna hurt my feelings. No, because even if it's a fragrant dish, that doesn't mean that every character is going to like it. Yeah, too much True. <laughs> for our next event, we will be heading back to the lands of Sumeru. For those of you who remember the Beast Tamers tournament, this next event is related to that. Oh, this is the, However, the mushroom the fighting? Will be pretty different from what you might expect. Because the Wisdom Orb is still in its stages of theoretical research, it might be a while before our next competition. Okay, but have you considered that I want it now? I know, but don't worry. 
to keep discussion alive and the competition fresh in everyone's minds, the organizers have put together a new event to spread the word. They purchased the rights to Theater Mechanicus in Sumeru and incorporated some fungi elements uh -huh. in a completely new game called Fungus Mechanicus. Hmm. Seems they're putting a lot of effort into promoting the competition. That's right. Okay, but so what is it? what will the rules be like for this event? I'm going to tell you. In Fungus Mechanicus, we will be controlling pieces that look like fungi, mm -hmm. aptly named Little Fungi. Mm -hmm. Our enemies will be Mechanicai, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. The Little Fungi will automatically attack the nearest Mechanicai, and travelers okay. will be able to select the Little Fungi and control their movement or order them to attack a specific target. That's kind of cool. During it's like a challenge, RTS. We'll need to command our Fungi and defeat all the Mechanicai to clear the stage and receive rewards. Hey, wait, did you say we're going to go up against the Mechanicai that we were controlling in the previous Theater Mechanicus event? That's kind of fun. I feel like I'd need to use uh, keyboard and mouse for this, though. Our friends. Look, they're attacking your little fungi now. Oh, gosh, you're right. They need to die. It's okay. By using Marvelous Jelly, we can let our little fungi unleash their skills. Using these skills at the right moment is the key. Looks like a familiar game. Yeah, Marvelous jelly I know what you mean. Gradually restored over time. And plaudatory protection will randomly appear during the challenge, granting an additional amount of jelly. Looks like we'll need some strategy. Like you have to plan out every move. I like, like how they brought really elemental really reactions into this little mini game, though. From the Beast Tamers tournament, will be making an appearance. Yeah, it is kind of like an auto battler. Do you guys remember uh, Bongo Head and Twirly Whirly? Yeah. Travelers can feed their fungi marbles. Those things are so cute. With them too. Ooh. <gasps> Bongo head and twirly whirly. The upcoming version will also include the Vibro Crystal Verification Challenge event. An engineer from Fontaine has arrived at the outskirts of the chasm to study the harmonic motion between gems known as Vibro Crystals and collect data in an effort to clear the name of his colleague. Interesting. So okay. he's helping out a colleague. What happened? Well, apparently. Uh, after completing his vibro crystal, I'm not research, excited to go to the chasm. Returned to his home nation, but came under suspicion. We'll be going there like soonish, like in the next couple weeks. Uh -oh. Yeah, so not excited for that. Someone to come to the chasm in his place and verify his findings. Ooh, sounds like it isn't easy being an engineer in Fontaine. That's why I stick to beating up bad guys. Nice. Yeah, from the sound of it, we're still gonna have to fight here too. In this event, travelers can connect transmitter and receiver crystals and attempt to... You don't like the chasm either? I'm kind of scared. A lot of people have been talking about it. I'm like scared. People have been telling me it's long and hard. ...be awarded medals based on the score and receive the corresponding rewards. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, we're going so to Enkonomiya for sure. That should be the next stream, actually. Give us more details? Should be going there sure next stream. Thing. I know it might sound a little complicated at first, but honestly, it's not too tough once you get the hang of it. The various effects are basically buff effects that we can receive during the challenge. And these effects are triggered by combining transmitter and receiver crystals. Transmitter crystals this are looks the confusing. for triggering the buff effect. And receiver crystals are the buff effect that occurs once those conditions are met. Oh, okay. I think I got it. Yep, yep, yep. And to conduct the experiments, travelers will need to assemble two teams of characters as well as the corresponding vibro crystal harmonic schema travelers will then carry out two what? Of combat and for our newer players out there there's no need to worry the event will also provide trial characters okay well that's nice <laughs> everyone in completing the challenge oh Ooh. nice at least they make it easy giving me an easy game. mode there you go there you go in easy that mode case, i'll aim for the highest here the garbage can no no oh just aiming for participation rewards yeah <laughs> i like my suggestion anyway amber what else is there in addition to the events we've already mentioned version three no i'm the playthrough we only stream on twitch and then i upload it in video format which will get easier that way a chance to stock up on character experience books and mora i'm sure many of our viewers are pretty familiar with this event it's super helpful for those who are looking to level up your characters so be sure not to miss it all right switching gears in version 3.5, a more cards? Time heated battle mode will be available in Genius Invocation TCG, which will feature some special rules. Nice. So what are we looking at here? Basically, this mode will be all about reducing the cost of elemental dice. So the number of elemental dice required to play the first card from your hand every round will be reduced by two. Also, 
the number of elemental dice required to use the first character skill each round will be reduced by one. Okay. That's kind of yeah. nice. From the sound of it, the pace of the game will be. So they're making the game faster. Yeah, I like it. Okay. I hope all our. I've been watching my friends play it. It looks fun. It. Last but not least, we have a system-related update. Uh, I think you'll like this one. After the version 3.5 update, the game will be adding additional rewards for completing Archon quests. Upon completing each Archon quest, travelers will receive one intertwined fate, along with a variety of Let's other go! Rewards. Once the update is complete, travelers can view the tour guide feature in the Adventurer's Handbook to claim the corresponding That's reward. awesome. Hey, more intertwined fate. Free wishes. Hey, Let's get it. it. After the version update, I, I kind of do that sometimes. That's really nice of them to do that. that. Let's get to today's last redemption code. Redemption code. Y'all are going to, we're going to need it, bro. We're going to need all the free wishes we can get. Hey, you see all these primos right here that we're getting real quick? That's 300 primos, baby. You already know where these wishes are going. I'm still trying to get, um, uh, Yelan, Yelan. I'm still trying to get Yelan, bro. New players have it easy. I know they're just they're just feeding us. Just keep hey, keep making it easy for new players. That's good though because it's get this game is acquiring a lot more new players recently, especially because of uh, Sumeru. So I'm glad because Sumeru is the reason why I started playing the game, and I have a couple other friends who also started playing the game because of the same region. So like it's only gonna get better with new players. Like so I'm glad that they're feeding us, bro. They're giving it. Yeah, yeah, feed us, bro. Hey, I'm hungry. Stuff me up. Okay, that sounds weird, but anyways. Hey, Barry's here. Hi. I need them wishes for Elon. Yeah, exactly. I can't believe how fast that went. Like we're already at the end of today's program. I know this whole thing just flew right by. Yeah, it really did. So Amber, how did you enjoy being on the special program? I absolutely loved it. Like I'm so hyped for this new version. I'm hyped for. She's Dia got a really good voice. And Mika and I'm a little biased, but but I, yeah, I'm pretty hyped for Dia. Me too. She's super strong. She does. Looks like she kicks butt, you know. Yeah. I'm excited. I like seeing for her punch people. Lines and yeah, I think it was a good idea to bring me on. Oh uh, <laughs> gosh, I am simultaneously See, okay, really okay. impressed and kind of livid. <laughs> Y'all love me. How dare you? <laughs> it was so good. Okay, yeah. I'm really no, we're not gonna do that again. Fun guy. <laughs> what? I am. We all love the fun guy too. Yeah, the fun guy are yeah. cute. And also, there's a lot of cool new story content coming up, like Farazan's hangout and uh, Dia's story quest, and also the whole Danes live Conria thing. That's that's gonna expand the world. Oh, hold on, that. let's pause real quick. I gotta say one thing. Something that Genshin needs to do, I get that they're trying to get new players in, and that's good. Good job. But they also need to have more events and stuff for people who have been playing this game for a while. So they need to have some hard content for those people. That's not just Spiral Abyss. That's I'm pretty, right. I'm pretty excited for Spiral for Abyss is stuff. fun, yeah. but it's only fun for a oh, yeah. no, I'm super little bit. I'm excited for all the Windbloom events um, and Dia and Mika, of course. Uh, I know the rhythm game is coming back, so that'll be super fun. Even rhythm game's I fun. That look cool. At it. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'll teach you. Okay, good. Yeah. No, I need some <laughs> rerun need some for help, events would be nice. I don't think that's ever gonna happen though. Them. But yeah, no, it was awesome to have you both here on the special program, and I hope everyone will enjoy all the new. Yeah, Dia is gonna be on the special on the standard banner, bro. See you all in game. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. So if you miss out on her, you can still have a chance to getting her, which is good, right? I like that. Thanks. We're not watching Kumax. I love Kumax, by the way, but we're not watching her right now. But that was great. That was good. I liked it. I like I like what we got out of Dia. She's looking good. She's looking good. Mika's looking real good. Hold on. Can we go back to Mika real quick? When they showed Mika, where were you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, right here. His combos? He's gonna be a force to be reckoned with for real. I like him. And he has like three different weapons, which is insane. I was not expecting that. He looks fun to use though. I kind of want him. <laughs> like really bad. Need Mika so bad in my team. I know. Mika would actually replace Chi Chi like straight up on my team. Straight up. 
I'm sorry. I love Tichi, but like Mika is pretty dope. Event reruns happen all the time. Do they really? Mika is same as child. You know, another thing is, um, cause what I'm noticing is like they, they release so many new characters, right? But it's like, if you have no new content to use those new characters, then people are less inclined to want to really roll for the new characters, you know? So I really hope that like they, they start pumping some stuff out because it's going to get really interesting as more new characters come out, right? Mika is basically a fusion of Chi Chi and Yoon Yeah, exactly. That's why I like him. That's why I like him. Yep, the cooking event they showed is a rerun. Yeah, like at a point, there's no reason to with without in-game com combat. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Hope will never die. Orale.